The other day I was playing some games with friends and one of them sent me this video of a triple inverted pendulum. And I don't know if you knew what he was doing, but I watched that and it was pretty much maximum intrigue level right from the beginning. We were supposed to be playing games and I was distracted. I wasn't pulling my weight 100% because I was busy watching that video again. And also I went and tracked down the paper that the guys wrote about that project, which is a pretty, pretty high level uh, thing, which is why they wrote a paper about it. But I got that and I thought that it'd be pretty cool to head in that direction. The camera project is still very much underway, but I have some decisions to make on a few things and parts that need to come in the mail. There's some delay time in there. So this would be a good thing, which is a similar project to work on in the meantime. And I was actually able to use a lot of the same components that I'd set up with the Arduino as far as the encoders and the stepper motors. So that was kind of a time savings too there. But uh, I ordered a few different parts the next day and we're going to start off with the single inverted pendulum, inverted pendulum and work our way up, maybe the double. This system, you have to have pretty low friction to do the triple and high speed controls and everything. But we'll start off with the single and see how long that takes to get going and then maybe go to the double and, and who knows. So let's get started. The rails you saw last week, and we mounted those on some old hardwood flooring actually that we'd glued together and made into a board and then it sat in the scrap pile and had no use. So we put that to good use here, mounted them on there, and I used the cart, which you're going to see in a minute, to make sure that they were parallel because they, you need to minimize the friction. And if they're not parallel, it's going to be squeezing in one area and trying to pull the cart apart in the other. Mounting the motor was a pretty straightforward thing. I just used these brackets that I had, screwed that into the end, and uh, made sure that the height was correct. The height for the pulley on each side needs to be equal so that the belt, and equal with the cart so that it doesn't pull up and down on that and create unnecessary bounce. Here's the cart, pretty straightforward. My belt was a little bit short. The, each rail is a meter long and it was only a two meter belt. So I had to use a scrap of wood there and just ran a screw through to mount it. To know where we are left to right and just keep track of how far we've gone also, we need an encoder. So we're going to use the encoder both for that uh, that roll and also as the pulley on the other end. It seems to be pretty robust with the bearings. And then to adjust the tension, I cut a slot in the end and with that screw and it just makes it easy. I got tired of lugging my variable power supply back and forth between the garage and the house, so I picked up a fixed 24 volt one here, and we put a new set of wires on that and got it ready to go. Since this power supply doesn't have a switch, I wanted to make sure that I can turn it off quickly, so I plug it into the ceiling right by me, and if things get out of hand, you just yank on it and pull it down. Which turned out to be quite a good thing, and I got to use it on my very first try that I plugged it in. I plugged it in, and the the ground wire just burst into flames the entire length of it. So that was quite surprising, but that's why you have safety procedures. Let's see if we can figure this mystery out. Plus, minus. I ran a quick test on the Arduino just to make sure it was still alive. Although I was more concerned about my computer because they were all hooked up, but fortunately everything was uh, it shorted out directly right back to it, and our little piece here acted like a fuse and, and did its job, so no harm done other than a little smoke and some scorch marks. With things plugged in correctly and our safety glasses on now, we were everything worked fine and we were able to give it a quick test drive back and forth, this time operating more as expected. I also took some white labeling tape that I had and colored it red with a Sharpie. So here's what we've got thus far. We have our base machine and we have a foundation built up. So we're gonna run it over and use the IR sensor to figure out where home is. So now we know that it's in the middle. You can see relative to those. We're gonna turn off the home mode. The laptop is just acting as a very expensive 5 volt power supply for this right now. And this is powering the steppers with our correctly labeled thing. 
And now that we're in the center, we're gonna rely entirely on the encoder. When it returned, that was based on the encoder. We simply use the IR sensor to stop it, zero everything out and go back. Now we're gonna send it off on a command to just go, okay? And the purpose of this is it's gonna show our safety range that we've set up at the end where the last thing that it's doing in the control is that it's checking if it's in, if it's in our safety range at the end. And if it is, it stops for a second and then returns back to the center. So let's send it off towards the end. Its command is just go, and then it stops. And it's now sort of uh, disabled itself. It's in a state for the testing purposes right now where it thinks, okay, I don't know where I'm at. So I'm gonna upload a little bit of new code here and this is gonna send it to the right side just to demonstrate that our safety works on both sides. With that base functionality working pretty well, we need to mount a second encoder on top of the cart. And this is going to keep track of where the pendulum is. So we cut a rectangle out of some aluminum and we need to create a hole through it for this central area there. The only one that I have that's large enough is a spade bit. And spade bits don't get a lot of love in the metalworking community, but if you take your time and you don't really care too much about the bit, it'll work pretty well in aluminum. Clean up the edges with a hand file. And we use our die chem thing to transfer the holes for the screws, get those drilled out, and run the screws in. Now we've got it mounted on there. We need to bend it now so that it can sit on the cart at a right angle. So we drop that in the vise, which is a little bit problematic because it's aluminum and it conducts the heat into that big mass of the vise so well. But we get to heat it up and uh, beat it over with the hammer as close as we can get to 90 degrees. And it looks pretty good from there but we drop it on the table and give it a double check just in case it's close enough to 90 for, for these purposes. Get that thing mounted up. I just picked sort of an arbitrary length in the pendulum that seemed about right, and everything looks pretty good. To get things started, I just used a proportional controller with a super low gain so that it was nice and sluggish and wouldn't get out of hand. It seemed to be working pretty well. I was just taking the direct error from off the center and multiplying it. But I started to notice when I cranked up the gain here a little bit of choppiness. And I puzzled over that for a while and then I cranked it up a little bit more and I noticed major choppiness. And this eventually came down to when it's too far, the number is too big in the acceleration. The motor can't handle that. And when it's in that intermediate range, the error times the gain was actually overflowing the int value that I was storing and causing it to go negative. Once I fixed that, the I tested it again. My motor output was pretty smooth. That flat area in the middle is because I have a dead zone so that it won't continually oscillate back and forth. I took the whole thing inside to experiment more and get it fine-tuned, and I noticed that the on light on the Arduino would light up, and then it would slowly dim out. And that was kind of a weird problem, so I did what anyone would do. I gave it more juice. I hooked up the <laughs> battery pack and uh, then what it ultimately came down to was that my IR sensor I was using to zero out the side. You notice that it has a red wire on the bottom but on my extension cord using the standard servo wire the red is in the middle and it was draining the power backwards through there and it fried it when I put the more the extra current in. So I was able to use the little cord that was in the sensor which is now ruined uh, to hook up a Hall effect sensor, but that had to, has to be fairly close to the magnet and it just seemed a little touchy, so I decided to set the home manually. I also decided to do some base performance tests to make sure that it could do what I wanted, never mind the control system, and it would occasionally freeze up on the acceleration, but overall it was working okay. Um, I did realize it was accelerating past the middle though sometimes, and I started to wonder if that encoder, or if the decoder from the encoder was keeping up because that pulse rate was not real fast. I hadn't needed it very fast here before. So I cranked it up to one megahertz here using my knowledge of timers on the Arduino. And that definitely helped out. It made it quite a bit smoother on these first couple acceleration tests. Once I started to crank up the acceleration further though, it didn't help anymore. And now we're just hitting the limits of the motor. 
the motor speed is just proportional to its distance from the center, so I'm manually adjusting it here. And the motor, you know, it just doesn't go that fast. It's a stepper motor, which I hadn't realized too much before, but um, once, the, you know, even if they do get going faster, the torque is not very good. So I think what I'm going to have to do is go to a regular motor. And I scrounged around to see if I could find one of my old RC car motors, but uh, I ended up going up to the hobby store and just buying one. I got a 35 turn, which is a pretty good amount of torque. And I'm just manually triggering it here through a MOSFET. And uh, things are looking pretty promising. I could have bought a speed control, but I don't want to do that because then because I don't know how they work. And now if I build my own, I'll know how it works. I was also concerned because the ESCs that I had experience with from my RC car days, were they were not symmetrical on the throttle. So there would be a pause before you went back. Evidently, you can program them better now, but I'd still like to build my own. And some of these programmable ones end up being fairly expensive. Even these basic tests can draw a pretty good amount of juice, and I noticed that the supply line was starting to get shiny. I didn't want to wait for Mouser to send me the right stuff, so I went to Radio Shack and bought the closest stuff that I could get. I picked up four Power NPNs and two PNPs. I could talk about a lot of the different steps that I went through for this, but suffice to say, there was a lot of learning that took place. And the thing before with my experience with transistors was that they were very small ones for that stepper motor. And I just wanted the thing to work, right? But now I want it to work well, and that's a whole different thing. And we're switching a lot more current also when I'm trying to get this thing to accelerate. Since I did have a couple MOSFETs I'd bought before just for the heck of it, I played around with those a bit, but they're only end channels and I ran the op amp into them and got good results when I was switching on the, the negative side, but I wasn't able to, you know, but it wasn't working on the positive side very much, which you need for an H bridge. And I didn't have enough MOSFETs anyway. So we ended up going with the regular transistors, which burn a bit more current, but they work pretty well. And my ballpark thing here was just looking at the, well, I mean, audibly also hearing the motor, but looking at the power supply and then how much time it would spend pegged at the current limit. Finally, that took much longer than I expected. I actually kept track. It took seven times longer than I expected, but we got through it and now it works. It's not quite symmetrical on the speeds, but we're gonna work on that. The final product was pretty simple, just some tip 3055s and some tip 42s for the PNPs. And that was it. And then we switched those with a 29 or 3904 uh, to get the current up, and then those are controlled by the Arduino. So pretty straightforward. I threw that cap on there to try and help with hitting that current limit, which I know I had set lower than the 5 amps that this supply will do, but I wanted to. It was kind of my, my, my figure. But I got to look into this cap thing more because it didn't seem to help very much. To gear this thing down, I picked up a spur gear, which has five times the teeth of the pinion. And what we need to do is mount that motor to the spur gear, and that spur gear then directly onto the pulley. I needed a way to mount to those outer holes in the spur gear, and I didn't have either a very large shaft, which could do it, but then I'd have to cut it down, or anything that I could weld or solder on there very easily. So we had this aluminum chunk, which has been laying around for is literally as long as I can remember. I have no idea what it's for, but I dropped that in the lathe because it was just about the right size and uh, trimmed off the end. It's thicker towards the base of that outer part. Then we did a few cleanup cuts to get the face nice and flat. And this is where we're going to mount that spur gear to. So I'm just playing around with it here to make sure everything works out. There's actually a very slight taper on the inside of the spur gear, so I cut that on later. Down the center of this aluminum piece, I had a very fortunate coincidence in that one of the shafts I bought for experimenting fits perfectly. I didn't need the end though, so I cut that off. And that leaves us with this sort of sleeve here with a taper on the end. I trimmed this rod so a bearing will fit on the end. And we can slide that down the center there. And if we fix this aluminum piece to the shaft, then we'll be able to effectively mount that spur gear onto the smaller shaft, which we can then turn down and put the pulley over top of that. So we dropped that in the lathe to trim off the smaller shaft. And then we squared up the ends on that and drilled out the center of that pulley just a little bit bigger. I bought a six millimeter drill bit for so that things would match up with the encoder shaft size. 
drilled that out, made it a little bit bigger, any bigger than that, and it would start to really hurt the strength. Then we took and turned down that first metal shaft so that it was six millimeters in diameter and that we could make that pulley fit over it. With the base pieces looking pretty good, what we need to do now is mount this spur gear onto the aluminum piece and it needs to be centered. These teeth aren't very big, there isn't a lot of play. So what we're gonna do is slide this shaft down in there and I wrapped it up with my foil tape and that's gonna center it on there. I hold that in place and just use a Sharpie to mark one. I'm gonna mark that, drill it out, and then do the others. But I need to hold that aluminum piece vertically. So I drilled a 5 8 hole down through this oak block that I have, which has been used for this purpose before. And then we very carefully used our, our center drill to get that started and then used a regular drill to follow down all the way through. We just tapped it out and uh, dropped the shaft down the center, put the spur gear over top, marked that out with a Sharpie, drilled out the rest of them and got everything secured. It seemed to run pretty true. I put in the lathe and just bumped this against it. There's a little more vibration than is evident on the camera, but we ground some flat spots on the shaft so that we could secure everything with a set screw and got the whole thing assembled. It's looking pretty good. The motor doesn't give you a lot of free space on the side, but it fit okay, and that's partly why I had to put those set screws in so far. A quick test turned out that that uh, spur gear was not mounted particularly well in the center, or pretty good, but not good enough. So we went and mounted it again, uh, just rotating everything a little bit. And then we made an exceptionally ugly mount for the motor to hold that on there, but it, it'll do, and it's stiff and strong. With the adjustments complete, we put the entire thing back together again, drop it in place, secure it on top, uh, get the motor in, make some adjustments, and get ready to give it a little test drive. Okay, I rigged up the belts. We're geared down five to one on the motor. It's 10.30 at night, we got a nine volt battery. And we're going to see if we can make it move. <laughs> and then backwards. That's pretty snappy. And I'm it's, this is a new one, but I mean, that's a pretty good response for a small amount of energy. I feel optimistic. Another quick test drive when I brought it inside. Worked pretty well with the power supply, but it wasn't quite as snappy. It's not getting as much current as that battery can provide. We're going to work on the current issue and hopefully start doing some balancing next week. Thank you.